Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So last week was spring break here in Hawaii, and so we took a family vacation. We actually went on a cruise around the different islands. It's a seven day trip altogether. Now, I did bring some retro handhelds with me, but the majority of the time we were actually doing family stuff. As you can imagine, we were out seeing the sights and visiting family and stuff like that. But all the same, I did bring those retro handhelds with me, and so we're gonna talk a little bit about that experience. Number one, we'll talk about the devices I actually brought and why, and how it all kind of played out and when I did have a spare moment or two, what I ended up preferring when it came to actually playing those. Now this isn't the first time I've done a travel related video when it comes to retro handhelds. Last year I went on a work trip to Texas and this one was kind of a unique experience because I basically got COVID right when I got there. And so because of that, I ended up making a video talking about what it's like to be stuck in a hotel room for a week when you don't expect it. So that's a little bit of a different video, but I'll leave it linked in the video description below. What we're gonna be talking about here today is what it's actually like to travel. Now there's things that are a little bit different about traveling on a cruise ship versus like getting on a flight and going somewhere. So we'll address that as well. Either way, I think this will be a pretty short video. We'll just kind of talk about my experience and maybe give a little bit of a footage of what we saw on our trip because it was pretty fun. Regardless, let's go ahead and start this video. So without any further delay, let's jump in. To start, let's talk about what I brought and why. And you've probably already figured it out, but I definitely brought the Steam Deck with me. After all, I play this thing every day. It's basically attached to my hip as it's been for the past year or so that I've owned it. I even made a YouTube community post where I asked people what device I should bring. But in that post, I actually said, besides the Steam Deck, what should I bring? And so you probably already figured it out. This one was coming with me regardless. We'll talk about the attachments and the other accessories that I brought with this here in a moment. Now, in addition to the Steam Deck, I did want to bring a couple other devices. The next one I brought was this one here. This is called the Absolute. Now, this is a review unit that I've been working on for the past couple weeks now. But basically, I wanted to test the offline capabilities of this. After all, on a cruise ship, there's many times when you're outside of cell phone range and you have to actually pay for Wi-Fi on the cruise we took when I never gonna pay for that. And so because of that, I just kind of played this offline to get an experience of what that was gonna be like. But it was nice to actually test it. And I did like to have the big screen when I was out and about as well. But honestly, I just really didn't play this one much other than just doing some testing here and there. What I really kind of realized when I was putting everything together is that in addition to the Steam Deck, I wanted something small, like a companion to the Steam Deck. Obviously when I have the Steam Deck, I'm gonna play something pretty powerful. And so I wanted something to basically offset that to have all the properties that the Steam Deck basically doesn't have. When it came down to it, I was most interested in three different handhelds to accompany my Steam Deck. And that was the Mew Mini, the Mew Mini Plus, and then the Amronic RG35XX. I wanted something really small to kind of be a companion to the the idea of the Steam Deck, which for me is a more like deliberate gaming system where you kind of pull it out and start playing. Whereas the other ones are just really small and you can pocket them and just kind of resume the game whenever you want. Now I've already taken the Miu Mini on several different other trips. And so I wanted to give the other two a chance. So I was between the Miu Mini Plus and the RG35XX. I ended up going with the Ambernic, and that's mostly down to the software. The Garlic OS that's running on the Ambernic RG35XX is much more mature right now. In fact, I feel like it's just at a point where it feels very stable, and so I can just pick up my games and start playing and not have to worry about settings or anything else like that. Onion OS is still in development for the Mew Mini Plus, and so because of that, I wanted to give that a little bit more time before I actually put it through its paces. And so I went with the Ambernic, and this was a really nice experience as well. So now let's talk about some of the accessories that I brought with me on my trip. Number one was a case Case for the RG35XX. This is just a hard drive case that I think I got on AliExpress. It may have come with some other retro handheld that I have bought back in the day. Either way, it's just very simple. It has a little mesh holder right here for your cable, and then also just like a strap right here so that you can put the device in. And I just kind of like put it in just like that where I kind of slide it in underneath the thing. And then, yeah, just like that, and close it up. I didn't really put any sort of cable or anything else in there. I did have a microfiber cloth right here because I love to just kind of wipe my screen, make sure it's nice and clean. Other than that, that's really it. I just wanted to have something that was really protective for the RG35XX. It's a pretty rugged device anyway, but all the same, it doesn't take up a lot of extra space to have this little case. And so because of that, that's what I ended up going with this one. 
Now, when it comes to the Steam Deck, things got a little bit more complicated. Number one, I brought this TomTalk case with me. There's a couple reasons why I preferred this one over the Valve one. Number one is the fact that it's nice and small. As you can see right here, it's quite a bit slimmer. And I had a backpack that I was putting everything in. And so it was really nice to be able to slide this in and then pull it out when I needed it. The other part I liked about it is that it has this kind of grip uh, angle to it right here. And so because of that, it's very easy to grab from the case. And so I put it in the backpack and then just could just kind of grab it like this. And it was really easy to grip compared to something like the Valve one, which I've brought on other trips. So I really like that experience there. But to be honest, once I got to my stateroom and then unpacked and everything else like that, I took my Steam Deck out of this and didn't really touch the case again until I was actually debarking from the ship one last time. And that's because I had different setups when I was actually out and about every day. Now inside the case, obviously, is going to be the Steam Deck. And uh, in addition to that, I still have that dbrand kill switch on it. I just did a video about this last week. I put on the vinyl skin and then the actual kill switch itself. And I gotta say, I've been loving this experience. Number one, it's super chunky to actually grab and hold and just feels very rugged. And I love the texture here on the sides as well. It just feels very well protected. I also like the vinyl skin right here, it just gives the Steam Deck itself a little bit of pop. And so I found myself actually when we were sunbathing, instead of grabbing a book, sometimes I would actually grab the Steam Deck and I would play this instead. And it worked out pretty well. This isn't the best screen when it comes to like direct sunlight. And so for the most part, I would probably only play it a few minutes at a time, but all the same, it was quite nice. And we'll talk more about that when we get into the actual gaming section of this video. But I just wanted to say that, yeah, I used the TomTalk case at least for the transparency transportation part of the travel itself. But then when I was actually settled in, I ended up not using it that much at all. And then just used the kill switch itself because it was quite rugged. And then when I was going out in town, I had a different solution. Now, at the risk of sounding like a TomTalk commercial, and this video is not sponsored in any way, by the way, uh, I did bring another TomTalk thing with me, and that is their Steam Deck bag. There's a couple reasons why I wanted to bring this. Number one, this is pretty roomy inside, so in addition to the Steam Deck, I have a lot of space for other things. We'll talk about that in a second. But then also, I like the fact that this is a sling, and so I can just kind of put it on one shoulder like this. Both of my hands are very free to move around with, and I don't have to worry about like having two straps with a backpack, and then all the sweatiness that comes from that when you have it all touching your back like this, which is kind of gross, especially here in Hawaii where it gets pretty hot. And so the sling is a more cool kind of way of walking around. So if you're going to be going on like a summer vacation or something else like that, I would rather bring a sling with me than an actual backpack. And so this one just made a lot of sense. Now, initially I didn't plan on putting the Steam Deck inside. In fact, I mostly just used it for things like battery packs and cables and maybe like our wallets and things like that. There were 10 of us traveling all together. So it was nice to be able to have the ability to be like, hey, do you need to charge your phone? Here's a charger. And so that was kind of the idea of having this with me in the first place. But as I kind of went through my days, I realized that I did want to bring the Steam Deck, which was kind of weird. And it wasn't for the reasons you may think. It's not like, oh, Russ is a big nerd and he can't go like five minutes without playing a Steam Deck. But it was really about there were moments that I saw as a tourist, basically on the other islands, where the Steam Deck was going to come really in handy. For example, one day we were in Kona, which is one of the two major cities on the big island of Hawaii. And we were just on foot, so we were just walking around. And one of the times during lunch, we went to the Kona Brewing Company, which is a beer company you may have heard of, but they also serve lunch and we had some drinks as well. But as you can imagine, like there was a long wait because there's 2000 people on the cruise ship we were on and some of them had similar ideas. And so we had like a 45 minute wait just to be seated and have our drinks and everything else like that. And so what I did is I busted out the Steam Deck and gave it to one of my sons and I was like, hey, go ahead and play. And so we ended up playing Vampire Survivors. And in the 30 minutes that it took for us to actually get our seat, he was able to get an entire run through on Vampire Survivors and he had a great time. Now, he could have obviously just been on his phone and looking at Discord and chatting with his friends and stuff like that, which is honestly what all the other adults were doing. But all the same, it was kind of cool to be able to give him that experience to be like, oh, I got a Steam Deck with me. Here you go and go ahead and play it. He could have had the same experience with the RG35XX, but let's be honest, he's 14 years old. He doesn't really care that much about retro games. He'd rather play what's cool right now. So he wants to play Vampire Survivors and Hollow Knight and all that other kind of stuff. 
Either way, uh, it was just kind of neat to have the Steam Deck set up available for him. And it was really no skin off my back to be able to put it in here and then have all the accessories anyway. And so I ended up walking around with the Steam Deck for several different days. I ended up not using it very often at all, but all the same, it was nice to have it handy in case we wanted to entertain the kids while we were out and about. And to be honest, you know, 90% of the time, electronics really didn't come into play when it came to our vacation. After all, we were there to see the natural beauty of Hawaii and the other islands. But as you can imagine, it was also very handy to have like the ability to put our battery packs and charging cables inside. We went to a lot of like mountains and places like that, you know, remote locations. And so because of that, there's no cell signal. And as many times that I tried to tell my in-laws, hey, turn your phone on airplane so it doesn't drain your battery looking for a signal, they just never remembered. And so often halfway through the day, their battery will be drained on their phones and they're still wanting to take pictures with it. And so it was nice to have the battery pack in that bag to be able to pull things out when needed. I think maybe in a perfect world, it would have been better to have a smaller sling, you know, something that maybe could fit a smaller device for the kids if they need it, but then also have space for the battery packs and whatnot, because this was relatively large for what I actually needed it for. But all the same, it was kind of cool to walk around with the Steam Deck as an available option as well. Now, this is my first time going on a cruise and the experience was kind of unique. And that's a little bit ironic coming from me, given the fact that I served nearly 23 years in the Navy and deployed on like 15 different ships during that time. But all the same, going out to sea for fun is a very different experience and I really enjoyed it. A couple things I learned about the experience. Number one is there's a lot of eating involved with the whole cruise thing. And I guess I just really didn't anticipate that. Now I found also, you know, traveling with a larger party, there was 10 of us all together with the extended family. We ended up like having different timetables. So sometimes someone would be hungry while others weren't. And then also like that ended up just leaving a lot of downtime. You know, maybe someone would go out and get a cup of coffee and we'd all hang out for a little bit waiting for them or whatever. And it's all good. It was like a really good time just being on vacation and having a lot of downtime. And honestly, that was exactly what I needed for this past week. You know, I'm so busy all the time, either posting new videos or recording new videos or discussing things in comments with others and whatnot, that I really enjoyed the time to just unplug and relax and not really have anything else to do. It's kind of nice to wait around on other people sometimes. And the added benefit of waiting around is that there were multiple opportunities to just grab one of my gaming devices and pick up a few minutes with either game I was playing. And so for the RG35XX, I was playing specific games and same thing with the Steam Deck. So let's segue over to that section next. Now between the two main devices that I brought with me, I found that I use them in different contexts. Number one, we'll start with the Steam Deck. So this one I used mostly when I had a lot of time to kill, maybe like 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Say we were all going back to our rooms to change and we were gonna meet up for dinner in an hour or so, that would be a great time for me to bust out the Steam Deck. Or, you know, sometimes, you know, we would come back to our cabin after like having a whole day out and we were all exhausted or maybe we're a little bit car sick just from driving up a mountain and back down. And so that was a great time too, to just have an hour to kill where everyone needed to diffuse a bit. And so that was, you know, for me, a good opportunity to play the Steam Deck a bit. In terms of games, I only really played two different games on my Steam Deck. Number one was Metroid Prime Remastered. I've been slowly going through this on my Nintendo Switch, but then also the emulated version on my Switch as well. So I have these two different save games going at once, but I'm now officially further ahead on my Steam Deck than I was on the Nintendo Switch. I'm in the like ice caverns, so I'm like maybe, you know, 10, 15% into the game at this point. I'm having a great time. I really haven't played this game in full since back in like 2003 or whenever the original one came out. And that was a totally different experience. Having it with twin sticks like this and the upgraded graphics is just beautiful. And so I would recommend playing that either on the Switch or the Steam Deck. They both play equally well. You may get a couple stutters here and there on the Steam Deck version compared to the Switch one, but I also enjoy the controls here a lot more than on the standard Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. Now the other game I ended up playing on the Steam Deck was Octopath Traveler 2. Now initially I was going to buy it on my Switch and this came out a few weeks ago and I'd really been thinking about it. But at the same time, I looked on the Steam store and I saw that they had a four hour playable demo available with the PC version as well. They have the same thing on the Switch too. And so I thought this is gonna be a great fit. So I downloaded the demo onto this device here and then took it with me on the trip. And that was just like perfect for me because I never really spent a lot of time playing games. For example, on the one week trip that we were out, I put maybe two, two and a half hours altogether into the game itself. And so, I don't know, like the demo just made a lot of sense to me, plus the fact that you can carry over your save game from the demo to the full game if you purchase it. 
it just like it just hit all of the wickets for me. And so I ended up playing that quite a bit. But there was a couple reasons why I ended up not buying the full game. So let's talk about that real quick. Number one, I found the game to be a little bit harder than I expected. Like I'm here playing like the first boss and then dying and I'm like, oh, maybe it's part of the game that you're supposed to die, you know, like how it is in certain role playing games. But no, it just said game over. You got to start over. And I was like, holy crap, maybe I'm in over my head. I'm way out of practice when it comes to role playing games. And so because of that, I don't know, like <laughs> I don't want to spend a lot of time dying and then replaying parts. This isn't Elden Ring after all. And so because of that, yeah, I'm not really sure that I'm going to be able to play through the entire game just given like my amount of practice and how much time I play with role playing games. Now, another thing that kind of bothered me a little bit about Octopath Traveler 2 was the fact that there was just so much choice right there in the beginning. After all, you have eight different characters to choose from. And I knew it was coming. After all, it's in the first game and I had read about it before. But all the same, it's hard because like you have these different choices to make. And even when I picked my first character, I kept thinking to myself, did I pick the right one or should I go back and pick the other one? Like I just had this analysis paralysis. It's kind of like when you're on Netflix and you're going through the movies and you end up not picking up anything because there's just too much choice. And so I kept thinking to myself, do I have to play this game eight times? And I realized of course that the characters all meet up at some point, but all the same, I kept wondering about the other storylines and how they were going to go. It was just a little bit too much choice for me. And given the fact that I don't have a lot of time to spend on games, it just was a little bit overwhelming. For me personally, I like like linear story driven games. So something like God of War or Uncharted, those are like really fun to me. Even something with a little bit of choice like Mass Effect is also really fun. I used to make a joke about that game and that you're always going to save the universe in Mass Effect. It's just whether or not you're going to be a jerk along the way. And so it didn't feel like that with Octopath Traveler. It felt more like if I picked one, I was going to lose out on the other storylines. Now, if I had the time for it, it would have been great to try out all the other different storylines and really get immersed in it. But all the same, I just don't really have the time for it. And so it's not that I don't recommend Octopath Traveler 2. It seems like a really great game. It's just not a really good fit for my lifestyle right now. Either way, those are the two games I ended up playing. Metroid Prime, which I knew what I was getting into because I played the old game back in the day, and then Octopath Traveler. And both were really great experiences. Number one, with Metroid Prime, it was just really fun to play the game. But then with Octopath Traveler 2, I really appreciated the fact that they had this four hour demo for that game and the fact that I could really get a feel for it before actually laying down a bunch of money for it. And so really a good experience when it came to the Steam Deck with those two games. Now, when it came to the Ambernick RG35XX, it was a different story. Number one, I'm always playing Super Mario World on these devices. Admittedly, this is still a game I haven't beat even since back in the day. And so I'm always trying to get a little bit further in that game as I go forward. I end up only really like just playing the first part of the game anyway, but it's really just kind of fun and repetitive. And I really like that kind of loop there. The other thing that I played a lot on this system was Golden Sun. This is a game I make a joke about all the time because I showed off my footage and my running joke for this is like, oh, there's something past the rain, like the, the thunderstorm that happens at the beginning of the game. You mean there's something that happens after that? And so I'm just trying to get further and further along in that game so I can stop making that joke. And I got maybe an hour or two into the game. And again, I'm using Garlic OS on this. The thing is, I, I didn't make a good save game for it and I came back home and I updated Garlic OS and I think he switched the default Game Boy Advance core. And so when I started up my game and tried to load my save state, it wasn't working. And so I have to go in here and figure out, you know, how to move the save state over, put it in the right folder and all that kind of stuff. It was kind of heartbreaking to see my save game progress lost right then and there. I know there's a way around it, but you know, there just isn't a lot of documentation out there for it. Honestly, I should probably make that documentation. Either way, uh, I am going to get back to my save game. It's just going to take a little bit extra work. If that happens to you with Garlic OS, don't worry about it. It's just within RetroArch. It's a matter of moving your save state over from one course folder to the other. And if you drill down into the RetroArch folder, you should be able to find it pretty easily. Either way, that's what it came down to with my RG35XX. I would play Mario World here and there, and then some Golden Sun as well. I got, you know, pretty far into the game and I am enjoying it. Number one, it's a lot easier to play than, you know, Octopath Traveler. I wasn't dying all the time. But then additionally, there's only a single story to follow. And so I really like that idea too. Again, it feels like an homage to the 16-bit era role-playing games, you know, Final Fantasy III or Chrono Trigger. And so because of that, it's just a really good fit for this little system. 
Speaking of those two games, I still haven't played through either of those either, so I really need to get back onto those. I think when it comes down to it, I should probably stop playing so many role-playing games and just focus on one of them and finish them. But you know, it's been that way for me for years, and so probably not gonna change my stripes at this point. Anyway, I kind of feel like I'm rambling, and so I think it's a good time to start wrapping up the video. In the end, I had a great time traveling with both of these devices. It really helped that I had the perfect accessories with me, in the fact that I had the case that I could just kind of slip in and out of my backpack, but then also I had the bag that I could take around with me out in town. I don't think you need all those things to go traveling with your Steam Deck or other device, but it was very handy to have all of them on hand. Anyway, that's really about it for this video. And so in closing, I'm gonna show a little bit of footage. It's gonna roll over right here. But basically there was some really beautiful things that we saw here in Hawaii. Now I'm based here in Oahu, so that's where we got onto the ship. But then we went to the other islands. So we went to Maui and then the big island or Hawaii. And then we also went to Kauai and multiple stops for some of those islands as well. And so we saw some very beautiful things. And honestly, if you're coming to Hawaii to visit and you have more than a week to spare, I think it would be really great to come out here to Oahu, you know, do all the things we have here, which is like Waikiki and North Shore, as well as like Pearl Harbor and stuff like that. And then you can jump on the cruise ship and it's a seven day Saturday to Saturday trip. And then you can visit all the other islands that way. Of course, you could take a plane. They call these island hoppers here. And you basically would get on the plane and go to the other islands. It's like a 20 minute flight between them. But all the same, it was also very nice to wake up on a new island as well. And so if you're thinking about visiting Hawaii, there's some really great things to see here. And I hope you enjoyed this footage. I'll leave it all captioned so you can see specifically what island we were on and what we saw here. And we did all this within those seven days. And so it was a lot of fun. Regardless of the destination, if you are going on travel here in the future, I hope you found this video helpful. For me in particular, I found that having a two device setup works the best. I have a bigger device for when I'm relaxing on the bed or something like that, but then also a more pocketable device that I can take around with me. And I found also that no matter what vacation I'm on, there's always a lot of downtime. And so it's nice to just have something that you can grab and just play a little bit here and there. And that's what I ended up doing. I also found that having a sling bag was very helpful as well, just in the sense that it wasn't as sweaty as using like a backpack, but then also it was nice to have that extra space for our valuables or for a battery pack and charging cable and things like that. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is a two device setup the best for you when on travel or is one or none the best? Either way, I'm interested to see what you think. As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.